it's not something that I've experienced myself very often while I've been out on my bike. But last week I witnessed uh, a fellow biker getting aggressively tailgated by a car. But upon reviewing the footage, I'm wondering if there's a little bit more to it. Right, let's set the scene. Two lanes. I've got a motorcyclist in front of me. We're approaching set of traffic lights and they're at red as you can see we are slight left hand bend opportunity for matey on his Kawasaki ER500 to lane split legally in he goes let's pause it there now here we go Mazda CX-7 Ford Falcon Sedan, matey on his Kawasaki. Lights are red and we're about to go. Green. As we set off, up to speed pretty quick. Motorcyclist on his way. And straight away, that, that Falcon right up the backside. Now look how close he is there. From that angle you can't really see, but it's probably six feet. Let me just double click there, try and get a, an idea of my speed up. 20, 40, 60. Ooh, well it's a 60 road, I'm actually probably doing about 60, 70, 70 k's an hour there. Touch over the speed limit. What I'm looking at, however, is just how close this guy is up the arse of this motorcyclist. He's slightly dropped back a bit now. Now at this point, I'm like, why is he, is, you know, if you look here, in the back window, he's got a P plate. Now this is a, a black, for those that don't know the cars, Ford Falcon sedan. Note, rear wheel drive, uh, I think they're a 4 litre inline 6 engine. But it's rear wheel drive. Now, as we're bimbling down, I get to the side and as I look across, because I'd already spotted that this guy's tailgating this guy on the motorbike. Now the, the guy's on the bike, he's doing about 65 here, kilometres an hour. I looks across at this guy in the, uh, in the Ford here. He's got the high-vis t-shirt, gloves on, and he's gripping the steering wheel. Watch this. Dropping it forward a bit more, and he accelerates. Now what you can't hear, because the audio is not great, what I can hear at the time, is that he's revving the tits off this car, he's revving it, and he's lunging backwards and forwards. Now look at this, see the spark? That's, a, that's off his brakes or something, but look at that spark there. I'll just go back a section again, just watch it again. And he's accelerating and braking, accelerating and braking. He's so aggressive. Now you, you look at, you get your tailgaters, and I, I, I've seen situations or I've seen videos where people are getting tailgated and two or three feet from the back of them in, in other cars or whatever. And he's dangerous. He's, he's what I call a mister. And I, t I call him a mister, not, not Mr. and Mrs. I'm talking about red mist. He's up here. He's a dangerous chap. You know, in, in this situation, he's obviously something's wound him up, which I'll come to. And he, he's metaphorically, he's swinging baseball bats while he's sat in that car. It's a killing machine. It's a not a good combination. And if, if, he, if he's accelerating and braking that hard that he's, he's making sparks come off his brakes, because it can't be his acceleration because it's a rear wheel drive car, um, it, it's not a good combo. And the problem we've got here is up the arse of a vulnerable road user. Now, of course, there's other types of tailgaters if you like, you've got him your mister as I've said, the red mister you've got your bully who's your, his time or her time is much more important than yours and they're just up your ass. they want to get past you and get on the way the type of people that jump down the outside of roadworks and then jump in at the last minute 
you know, they, they won't queue, they just push you out of the way. And then there's your, I suppose, your, your, what I call spooners, <laughs> you know, they're a bit personal. They're not aggressive, they don't know any better, they just got comfortable with riding six foot off the back of somebody else or driving, should I say, too close to the vehicle in front and oblivious. The spooners, a bit too personal, a bit too cuddly, you know. But this guy's, he's your mister, he's got the red mist up, he's aggressive, not a good combination. So he's, he's sparking his brakes, he's up and down the back of this car here. I've verbalised the registration number just in case I need to look it up in case anything happens. Now I've got a green lights coming, traffic lights. They change now, amber. Oh, I've just gone too far. So let me just go back. I hit the wrong button. So go back to this section here. So they've changed there. As I get there now, I'm thinking this is getting a bit dangerous because he's right up his ass again. Look, he's on the brakes. He's now very close. Matey on his bike, his ER500, is slowing down. Getting dangerous. And I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. I spot here. Now, I do something I wouldn't necessarily do. But Matey and his Mazda, I'm pointing at the screen. I'll do it with my arrow. Matey and his Mazda here, swinging right. There's a right-hand lane to turn right. So which leaves my lane free. And I'm thinking, I need to give this guy a little bit of a word to some extent. Not necessarily my brightest idea. However, I had it covered, I knew I had a lane and I had the option to get out of the way. Knowing his likelihood is his, his aggressions up here. But I'm thinking, what are you doing? This guy's coming to a halt on his motorbike. And I, I pull across and I get onto the white line and I just give this guy a bit of a Paddington. Uh, a Paddington bear hard stare. And I'm like, you know, what are you doing, mate? Just wind your neck in. I'm sort of like giving a show of strength on behalf of the motorcyclists, if you like. But what I've noticed is, Matey here on his bike, got his rucksack on, he's got his work boots, jeans. I actually think he's oblivious. He's either that or he's the coolest cat ever. Which is good if you're in a situation like this, not to get intimidated, not to race, and not to accelerate out of the way. The secret, I suppose, in a lot of situations, stay calm. Not antagonise the guy. But maybe he already has done, if you know what I mean. What's happened here? He's coming to a halt. I've given a show of strength from the motorcyclists towards this Ford Falcon. And said, look, wind your neck in a bit. And I'm looking at him. Now, I'm here. I stop a bit before the line. Don't get right up to it. And I'm looking around. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, watching, I'm actually got a, a, my eyes in the mirror here. I'm thinking, is this guy in the car going to get out and start having a go? Because he was that aggressive. Which is, I've seen before a bit of road rage. And I'm waiting. Lights are red. Watch this. Green. Here he goes. I hang back. I give this guy a look. And I think I'll just... He's off. I think I'll let him go. And it's, it's a proper 88 mile an hour clock tower. You know, striker lightning. Bang. Back to the future. He's going that quick. Right, now, talking about back to the future, I'll come to that. I'm going to take you right back to the beginning of this situation. Now, I actually think this motorcyclist was, in fact, a bit oblivious to what was going on around him. And I wonder if he antagonised this guy. This, let's have a look at it from a different situation. Now, you've got to consider here, back to that beginning, what are your actions? Can be perceived like to other motorists. Did he wind him up? Look at where you came in on him. Now this Falcon is at the front of the queue, wanting to get on his way. He might be might be late for work. Watch the motorcyclist. Straight across the front of him. And if you look, he's gone to the left hand side of the lane. He's like, you get I wanted to get that was my lane. You've taken my lane. As a lane splitter. When I set off, I stick to my line down the middle or I try to keep central until I get to a situation where I can choose who I'm going to drop in front of. And I generally will then go where there's the biggest gap. He's just shut the door on him. That's what's antagonised this guy in the Ford. He's just completely shut the door on him. That's what's wound him up. You've got to consider your actions. 
not that this guy in the Ford was in the right to then follow him up and do get all this aggression up behind him all the time with that, you know, with that accelerating, that lunging. That's wrong. But he got the red mist up. But there's a reason for it. I'll take you back to the future. Down here. So he's, we've got the green. Zooming forward. We've got the, the acceleration of the car. Off he goes. And he actually went that quick into the straight road. I actually never saw him again. He was gone. Proper in a rush. And quite often I will catch people up again at the next set of lights. But I didn't see him. So, now the reason I think this guy not only was oblivious on the motorbike, he had these little mirrors, I never saw him do a look over the shoulder, I never saw his head move, I never saw him flustered at all. Either that or he was the coolest guy you'll ever meet. And I had no um, conversation, no acknowledgement of him, no wave, he didn't even look round. Let me take you back five minutes previous to this incident. I'm at a level crossing, I'm waiting for the train. I'm just going to zoom it forward a little bit. See that bright headlight in my mirror? That's motorcyclists. Now, let's just go back to that section. Let's just have a train's come in. Pause it there. I've got right hand lane here, left hand lane here that goes straight on. If I'm wanting to go left, I want to be in the left hand lane because I'm going to swing off and go across here after the barriers go up. I've got a motorcyclist come up on the outside lane here. Now I'm hitting the R500. Get to this stage, it's become like a Formula One start. Okay, train goes by in a second, just zooming forward. At that point, it's gone. Barriers come up, it's my right away. Formula One thing, red lights go off, everybody goes. And I'm watching, I'm about to go, and wang, straight down the outside, comes across the front of me. Right, and I'll go, cheeky bugger. cheeky bugger. Now, nothing illegal, nothing aggressive, but there was a certain lack of etiquette in his riding. And I think he's oblivious to what's going on around him and oblivious to what his actions will be perceived like. It's interesting. Did he have the same level of care less, couldn't care less, not aggressive, but certainly a little bit absent-minded, maybe not considerate to other road users, which then is an ingredient, if you like, towards the angst of other motorists. And he's done that to me, and I've seen him come across that falcon at the next set of lights, which I showed you earlier. Just have a think about what your actions might be perceived as when you're riding along. Because you could end up on the receiving end of somebody like that. And then it becomes a real mess. Because that could have got a lot worse. What do you do? One thing you do do when you're getting tailgated, stay calm. Now he was calm, but I think it was, <laughs> I think it was just more by the fact that that's just who he is. He's just no idea what's going on around him. He wasn't getting angry on his motorbike. He wasn't getting retaliating because he didn't know it was happening, in my opinion. What do you do? Every situation is different and you can't, there's no wrong and right answer when dealing with tailgaters. I think there's so many different scenarios can happen. What, tell me in the comments what you have experienced, what you did. Every scenario is different and you can't really make a decision, you can't really advise. Keep calm, and do your best to keep out of the way if you get the mister. That won't be ideal. So anyway, thanks for watching. As you've seen, uh, I am now not Rider Skills. We've, we've had a rebrand. I'm the uh, Rider Guider and uh, I'm Neil. And um, thanks for watching and subscribe to the guide, the Rider Guider. Give us some thumbs up or down, thick skinned. See you soon.